Hello, this is Martin Brossman. I'm Greg Heyer. And I'm Elise Archer. And you're listening to Linking Into Sales. Uh, this is episode 88, believe it or not. I know, Ooh. it's an exciting topic today. We're going to jump right into it. Yeah, so uh, a little while ago, I had, uh, I had published an article uh, back in, actually it was 2014, and the title of it was, uh, was called uh, Social Selling is About Opening, Not Closing. And we actually had a podcast uh, episode that we had done about it, and I went back and re-listened to it. And I think we've gotten a lot better since then. <laughs> so it's revised and updated with the three of us. Now. Yeah. So, uh, so thank you, Elise, for joining in on on with this particular conversation because actually, the the social selling is about opening, not closing. Article really resonated very well with a lot of folks, and I think it kind of painted the picture of what we're what we want to set uh, as far as expectations for for social selling. Uh, so, when you um, did you have a chance to read it? I did. Okay. I did. That thing got some uh, mad comments. It did. <laughs> it did. It's good. Before we begin, we need to mention our sponsor. And we're at NC State Technology Training Solution, uh, which is our sponsor. They offer a whole uh, gambit of training courses, both online, in person, uh, including things like Excel. Uh, they offer uh, social selling training done by us. Mm -hmm. And then I do a course with Karen Teedy that's social media management as well as many other technical trainings and they offer come to you courses as well as well. It's called NC State Technology Training Solution. That's right. We'll come to you and teach you all this stuff about uh, right. social, no, whether it's social selling. We do on site. Uh, so, Holly's doing one tomorrow. Yeah, we, there, there's some on site training that, uh, that NC State Technology Training Solutions does, as well as they offer a number of different technical uh, classes, such as A, Comp TIA, uh, some Cisco training, and, as well as uh, videography. You know, some, a lot of great opportunities here. Uh, NC State Technology Training Solutions is also a nonprofit, so any any classes you take are tax deductible, and you do earn continuing education credits. It's very important for your professional education, uh, so definitely check them out. Go to linkingintosales.com/ncsutts to learn more about our sponsor, North Carolina State University Technology Training Solutions. Long name, great purpose. And now let's kick off our okay, show. Let's go back on... to the show. <laughs> Sales is about opening, not closing. Social Whoa. selling is about opening, not closing. Absolutely. Social selling is about opening, not closing. Let's dig into this. That's an interesting topic. And how many views did you get on that article? Well, let's not brag too much about it, but it was over 25,000. There were um, <laughs> <laughs> over 500 okay. likes and, uh, and a few more comments as well. So uh, comments were really nice. I, I really like the, 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 uh, the positive and the negative that came from the comments. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people had, had shared a pretty good perspective. Of course, I tried to counter all the negative ones uh, as much as possible, <laughs> unless they were way too far out there on the fringes for me to even attack. Um, but uh, you know, th there was a there was a few uh, comments out there on that article that basically had said, you know, hey, well, we've always been taught it's all about closing. It's uh, close this, it's you know, close everything, so that way you can you know move on to the next stage. It's close an appointment. It's you know, close this, and I don't know. I, to me, this just doesn't sound like it's fun, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree, and, and not only that, uh, if you're seeing it as an ongoing process and, and really recognize that the closing is a starting point to deepen the relationships and other opportunities, the risk of treating it as a closing is that you move on and you don't build those lifelong relationships that really get the payoff today. Uh, and you as a expert in solving your clients problems mm. you know I, I think the traditional approach to closing by so many salespeople that's done the wrong way is very selfish because we get so focused on am I gonna get the sale am I gonna get the sale and so there's that hard push towards getting a yes from the client that like you said Greg in the article it turns people off it's yep. it, it's such a turnoff and so when selling is done the right way closing is really just about in my opinion helping people make a decision whether that's yes or whether that's no and when that's done the right way and when your approach is really about how can i help my customer um, especially incorporating the tools that you have available online now um, to help make sure that your your proposal fits their needs closing should be a formality it should be a very simple yes or no based upon whatever their needs are and then from there the relationship opens so I think it's a it's a paradigm shift, but it's an important one. 
Mm -hmm. You know, years ago, it's kind of funny. I was always pretty good in sales, but I called myself in the support field. And I used to have a more uh, cynical view of sales as manipulating people into something they didn't want. And then when I became self-employed, I went, I better clear that out of my head quickly and come up with a new definition or I'm going to starve to death. Uh, and I really defined it for me as developing a true win-win relationship for both parties. Because if it's win for you as a customer and lose for me, I can't be around to support you or vice versa. And then this is, is in our education process of social selling. It is like the focal point that then starts branching out to all the other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think they go in well. And it's real important that we really start redefining it as, as, the, as the opening of now they've committed at the level of writing a check or putting money behind it. So now we can really roll up our sleeves deliver and build deeper relationships by proving the quality of the value we give them for their money. I'm curious to hear from you, Greg, where did that idea initially come from <laughs> that it's that social selling is about opening, not closing? Yeah. So uh, honestly, I was, um, I was listening to a book and uh, it just kind of dawned to me that, uh, you know, from what this person was saying, it actually came from uh, the e-myth. Uh, which is an excellent book about uh, that dives into uh, how uh, business owners need to look at their business as a product that they are continuing to develop rather than looking at it as a job, which unfortunately a lot of small business owners end up doing. Uh, sometimes, you know, even salespeople look at their, the, you know, their role as a particular job when they should be looking at it more as a business. And there was this line that was, uh, that it kind of, it caught my attention real quick. It wasn't a tremendous amount of emphasis on it, uh, but he had said that, you know, sales basically is the, op is the opening, uh, not the closing of the relationship. And, and where I was at the time uh, was actually a marketing manager at a, at a local software as a service company. And it just everything that I had experienced with the sales team where they would go in and sell one particular module of their product and not go back to sell it again, it, it all kind of clicked for me at that point there. And, and, uh, it, it, it made sense that if they were actually doing social selling, uh, looking at their customer, learning about them, trying to figure out their needs and analyzing what else they could potentially use to help uh, uh, complete the solution, then, uh, then you know, in using that uh, process of, of thinking about the sale and social selling as an opening uh, rather than a closing, then they actually would have possibly sold, you know, at least four times more in revenue uh, if they were actually taking that particular approach. Uh, so if anybody you know wants to uh, check out a really cool book, The E-Myth is a great book. It's been out for a number of years. It's been revised recently, uh, but an excellent book that you should, uh, you should definitely pick up and read. And I think E-Myth Revisited would cover them as a start too. Mm -hmm. it kind of well, th that's the that's, upgraded one. Yeah, that, that's the one that was uh, re uh, redone recently. The thing that, that kind of comes to mind while you were talking about where that idea initially came from is the idea of integrity in selling. Because if you're a salesperson who goes out and just wants to get that sale and wants to get the commission on it and move on, you're not doing your clients the full service of researching them, of offering them all of the solutions. So you have to, it seems to me that you would have to have a high level of integrity in selling to sometimes slow down that process and to say, let me make sure I'm making all the right recommendations and to be willing to do that and then build a relationship that you can go back to to make follow-up recommendations. When you're not going back to that relationship to sell more to them, it probably means it wasn't strong enough in the first place. And also, another point is uh, some of the companies still haven't ramped up uh, wor is, you know, where they go, your job is just bring them in and we'll take it from there. Well. That's not exactly a wonderful handoff. If you've really built trust with one person and then someone else then completely takes it over and there's no interaction, I don't know many things in life where we go, well, I finally took the time to build trust to work with this person. I'm glad they're going away now. You know, <laughs> I, I don't think that maps on to many things. So we do have to have, I do want to have compassion for those out there where their company is going, you bring them in, give them to us then you get back out there and do it. 
and that's it. Instead of realizing that referral-based selling is all with the existing clients is one of the most efficient ways of selling. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that I, that I kind of uh, thought about with this, uh, you know, with this particular statement uh, that social selling is about opening, not closing, was that I, I kind of thought that the sales department was thinking backwards, you know, compared to the rest of the organization, which is struggling to keep accounts open. Uh, in which the rest, every other department, their goal is to keep customers, right? Uh, and, and with sales, if they're continually thinking that I have to close all the time, that's kind of a negative uh, when, the, you know, and when the rest of the company is working hard to try and keep accounts uh, open. So I wonder if, if we had actually shifted the mindset away from the Glen Gary, Glen Ross days <laughs> of uh, you know, that 1992 movie, which I referenced in the article, that you know, uh, ABC always be closing. Instead, if it was ABC always be creating, then uh, would we have a better sales department and people would actually really uh, appreciate sales as a profession much more than what they do today? Mm. So. Mm. I'm, I'm curious if you work for a company um, like one of the ones, Martin, that you were referencing where it's just about bring in bring in the sale bring in the sale and then hand it off what do you do if you well, want to be a good opener like what do you what do you do in that you situation take our linkedin training and job hunt no i'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, you know, uh, one of the methods is to me nothing speaks more in getting the right to change the system than meeting an exceeding quota i, I want to get back to that in, in like Coaching, when, when I work with somebody and you too in coaching is uh, first build them up and you may not have, you may stay connected at levels you can until you start getting enough cloud internally and getting enough strategic allies in the system that you can see, can we start shifting this in the company? Uh, but that takes both, You're, you've got to meet your quotas, you've got to build your allies, you got to find your your network of people who really are interested on the inside. It's not an easy game to shift because most people usually, unless they're making the change, most human beings resist change. So that's to me a start. And a great question you brought up is if you're in those environments, what can you do? And uh, and you know the first thing is do what you need to to keep the job within obvious ethical realms. And then second, start mapping out what, who would I find that would be most open that be an influencer to start shifting this and showing another way. Mm -hmm. So kind of control the controllables, do what you can do. I could also see how setting proper expectations for the client up front about the fact that you won't be their main point of contact moving forward but you're always available if they need anything. So just really being clear with them about what they can expect and who they're going to be working with. Because that's also, I mean, you're, you're building a relationship within the constrictions of what you have to work with at your, at your office. Very true. But I think that we, uh, we, we also have a whole lot of access to, you know, information, you know, social sellers. Uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, social selling experts and trainers out there, quote unquote, that uh, that that really, really hyper focus social selling on prospecting. And if if you guys have been listening to the podcast for long enough, you realize that we are not just about prospecting. As a matter of fact, we put you know you should know how to prospect. I think you can figure out how to put social and prospecting together and make it work. It, but it, you know, social is designed to help develop and build relationships. And so those relationships happen prior to you know prior and post post close you know or opening and I, I, the you you should still maintain those relationships with your clients and use social to do social listening uh, as well as uh, you know building social capital with your with your customers uh, so that way they can refer you to other business partners of theirs that might be needing the similar solution especially if they have a great experience uh, this isn't new it's just you know we, we just can't be in a uh, B2B sales can't be that transactional. We, we can't just, you know, come in here and, and say, okay, here's the proposal, sign here, great, thanks, and I'm going out the door, here's your account manager, I'm going to go back and go selling again. Uh, it, we, we, just, we just can't do that. Um, it's, not, it's not as efficient because we want them to be helping us bring in other people. And now that we are building the relationship smartly on the web and on the ground, both, 
this might be now we're connected to them on LinkedIn and we can touch them in other ways uh, that with useful content or connect to them on Twitter as we move forward. So again, to me, another piece of this is make darn sure you're not the salesperson that only thinks on the web or only thinks on the ground. Mm -hmm. Has to be a hybrid. So if, if we are sales professionals who are operating in an environment that's supportive of, um, of building relationships like this, what are some ways that we can become better openers? I would be curious to hear from you guys what and and then you get to answer that one too. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you got a lot of good ideas. So we'll speak and see if something pops to mind. Yeah. Excellent. Go ahead, right? so, so I think that you know there are there's a there's a um, uh, there's a process on you know sure Martin and I have been also working on which people can learn more about at socialselling.training. Uh, you know fairly shortly we'll have some courses that'll be coming out uh, that'll address this. But I, I think from a, if we want to take and compare. Uh, the social selling to traditional selling, for, you know, from that, um, you know, that opening standpoint, we we can take a look at a couple things like uh, your initial contact and greeting. With social selling, um, you know, we can identify the specific stage uh, of a prospect to kind of figure out where they are, right? So, uh, you know, what kind of content are they reading? What kind of questions are they asking? Um, you know, who are they asking questions with online? Are they talking with their friends? Uh, are they talking with other experts in the field, other influencers? Uh, the traditional pr approach would be more like um, I'm going to pick up the phone or I'm going to dial and I'm going to figure it out until I get the questions out of you. I'm going to answer as many. You're going to. I'm going to get you to answer as many questions as possible because that's just what I've been trained to do. I've been trained to make 300 phone calls a day and ask 2,000 questions before I can go home to see my kids. So yes. and that doesn't sound fun. Though, does no, it? it doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Uh, and also, again, we're mapping out the buyer's journey. We're making sure that we keep building that information in our social CRMs about them, what's information, what works, what, what seems to be of values. We're, we're, we're going from the personas that we receive from marketing to the persona of each one of these customers and using our, our, our social CRMs and other tools to keep track of it. Uh, so that we're we're better listeners both on the web and off of activity that's occurring. And this is this is again I want to say on the web and off the web. Some some want to talk on the phone. Some want to talk through text. Some want to talk through email. Some we can see visible activity they're doing on the web, which we'd use as information to go. Okay, uh, looks like they're on vacation now. We need to give them a little breather time. And, and to me, it's, it's sort of like uh, pacing and leading them, building rapport, a little thinking of my days of either learning how to dance or, or the martial art Aikido, where it's blending with them so we're listening for the right time to be available to them. You know, what I was thinking of when, when I went to Japan, the, the best service I have ever experienced was there because instead of wanting to be my buddy when they came to the table, the, the waiter or waitress knew when to become visible, knew when to provide the information, and knew when to become not visible. And so this is, this is a combination of both all of our in, intuition and all of our reasoning. So that's that's my answer, Elise. Let's see what your thoughts are on this because you you think you know along these lines too. I'm actually so I actually had a question come to mind as okay. you guys were talking. I'm curious what your thoughts are, if you are a sales professional who's working for a company where you have these high daily quotas, um, like a hundred calls, three hundred calls, like you <laughs> referenced Greg before, which believe it or not, some people have yeah. quotas like that. Um, how do you build out time for social selling into that process? Because clearly you're taking more time with each prospect, you're researching them. I can see some people saying this is gonna slow me down, but does it really slow you down? Or are you just being more efficient? How does that work? So I think that there's a couple things that you have to kind of consider uh, as you, you know, take, I don't think we would ever suggest that you never pick up a phone and make a phone call. Okay, yeah, right. so I, I, that's uh, w cold calling still exists. It is still, for the most part, relevant. Um, you know, for the most part, it's just not as effective as it was. So I think there's a transition that has to be made, and it starts by working a little bit closer with marketing. 
and looking at the data that marketing is collecting based, in, based on the leads that they're bringing in, right? So I know for a fact that marketing is trying to gather as much information as possible to be able to take and make a successful handoff to sales. Okay, so we, we've heard a number of times in the past, uh, whether it's on previous episodes here or from other uh, analysts out there in the, in, in the space, is that marketing and sales have to be in better alignment. Uh, I can tell you that if, if your company, if you're making 300 calls a day and there's a whole room of you who are making calls, chances are I, I would hope that you have marketing automation. And what marketing automation is going to do is gather the data, like what web pages are you checking out? You know, what content have you been downloading? What emails have you been opening? Uh, what information have you been filling out on those forms? And salespeople have to look at that. They have to look at that data that's coming in from the marketing automation system and hopefully into Salesforce or whatever CRM that you have. And you're looking at that and you're putting that conversation into context. And from there, you will have a more higher quality uh, conversation with your prospect. You'll understand where you need to take the conversation because honestly, as a salesperson today, you are the person who has to lead the journey, right? And you have to get into that journey with that prospect much sooner than, than at any other point uh, in, in, in the history of sales, right? You had um, the CEB, uh, the corporate executive board put out the stat saying, you know, that uh, through, from their research that about 50%, 57% of the sales process is already complete by the time the, the, a prospect picks up the phone and brings in sales. That means that sales has to be in the process earlier, right? So the data that, that uh, people are collecting from the marketing automation system can help you actually get up to speed faster on what the prospect is going through. So that way you can make a better decision uh, for, or you can help that prospect make a better decision with going forward. So I think that as you take and start using more of that marketing data, I think more and more will salespeople start to realize that, hey, I can get very similar data based on the interactions and engagements I'm having in social. And maybe I won't need to take and pick up the phone. Or when I do, I actually have, I, I know exactly who I'm calling uh, and I know exactly what I need to talk about and I know how to relate to this particular person. Mm. Absolutely. And, um, you know, looking at your article um, in the, the first phase of the sales cycle that you cite there, which is initial contact and greeting. I mean, even if your company isn't providing you with some high powered marketing automation data, there's something super simple we should be doing before every call, which is looking to see who do we know in common on LinkedIn. So even if outside of that, it's a cold call, because I make calls every day. I have a quota as well of how many calls I need to make, but I always have a name that I'm leading with when I make that phone call. So I may call Greg and say, hey, Greg, this is Elise Archer. Uh, my name probably doesn't ring a bell. We haven't actually had the opportunity to meet yet. But by chance, does Martin Brosnan's name ring a bell? Mm -hmm. And so from there, all of a sudden, what was a cold call is now a call about a mutual friend, Martin. And so it's just taking that extra little time before you do your calls to say, who do we know in common um, that can turn this call from a cold call into a warm call? And it's incredible the difference it makes when you lead that way. So there's just simple things that really don't take that much time that you should be doing on every call. Um, even if you are still, you know, you have that quota of dials that you need to make every day. You, you know, when I uh, started working with this, there was a gentleman who came to a group I led at the Capital City Club. And um, it was interesting because he was starting to use the social space to not only exceed reach quota, but exceed it so far ahead uh, that he it was he actually got in so much trouble they told him he had to stop it immediately because they were not in the social space or he'd lose his job uh, and and so I do want to bring up you know pay attention to where you are and there might be a time you need to smile do your job and uh, you may there you may be pushing rope far too much to be able to get them to change at some point and the, you know, luck, he had to choose to, uh, well, actually, he, 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 he eventually, they decided to stop working together because he was going, I'm exceeding quota and you won't let me use the ethical and legal tools that I shown to work and he found other work. So I just want to acknowledge some people, there is a wall where you got to do what you need to do and then look for other opportunities and make sure you interview. Now, 
hopefully most of the people will be able to work inside their system like we're mentioning them, but there are exceptions to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one final thought on my part, one final question would be, how do we redefine closing? So in the framework of social selling being about opening and not closing, what does closing the business mean? And how do we transition into that mindset of, of, uh, of opening rather than closing? I'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, there's one term that, uh, that Martin and I have kind of settled on uh, when we talk about the, um, uh, about the closing process or the opening process, and we call it uh, actually mutualizing the commitment, right? So yeah. it, it, the, the mutualizing the commitment basically says that, you know, you have uh, both you and I agree to what we just, you know, what we spoke about, what, we're, what I'm, the services I'm going to provide to you, and the commitment that you uh, make with me in order to implement that, those particular solutions, uh, or, and also to pay the bill. But, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, Martin, why don't you take it a little bit further? No, that's it. it it's, uh, we were playing with words that would describe the new version beyond a closing and the mutualizing the commitment was the the words to start with to kind of describe the new phenomenon that's occurring so if you we're working together we're in agreement it's a mutual commitment now we need to be moving forward in the implementation and make sure the maximum value occurs so you the customer become a raving fan and want to refer us to multiple people and uh, so that's that's kind of the start. We 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 have more in store in our online training too of this that we've worked on, and and excited uh, to Elisa's giving her perspective and other resources. So, Elise, any views of your own on this? I'm I'm going to keep pushing it back. You have asked such good questions, but. Uh, <laughs> Love to hear those. Well, you guys are just, you're such good wordsmiths. I love that. <laughs> Mutualizing the commitment. Okay. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, um, you know, the, the other thought that comes to mind is when you do that and when you shape up your relationship with your new uh, client in a way where you know you're going to have a relationship, you're going to be staying in touch, you're going to be working together, and you are setting yourself up so well for referrals. Yeah. That's, uh, that is going to be one of the biggest game changers in your business because not only will they be probably more likely to proactively provide them, uh, but if you're staying in touch with them, you're going to see who they're connecting with on LinkedIn, what they're up to, um, what's going on in their network. And if you're a good professional salesperson, you know how to get referrals and how to ask for referrals the right way um, and ask to be introduced to people in their networks. So just setting up the relationship um, in the way that we're talking about tonight really should mean that you never have a lack of people to call on who are warm referrals from your network who you've served well with the opening process. Exactly. No, so there's uh, one final thought I, I guess we can uh, kind of leave, leave this episode with. So <laughs> I, I, I like to take a look at, at things and kind of change the perspective on them just a little bit. You know, one example would be social selling is about opening, not closing. Uh, but I try to look at things and try to put the sales twist on it, right? Uh-huh. Right. So I, I, uh, earlier, I think a couple weeks ago, I shared you uh, this image uh, that I kind of doctored up a little bit. Uh, and it was a, a scene from a movie called The Matrix. Do you remember this one, yep, Elise? The one with yeah. the boy. <laughs> the one, right. Bending so, the spoon. So there was a scene in the movie where Neo goes to meet the, the, uh, the Oracle, and he meets this little boy, and, he, and you know, goes through this whole process of, you know, uh, try not to – try. Try not to uh, try not to bend the spoon. That's not possible, and you know only realize the truth. And what's the truth? Well, there is no spoon, right? So, I, I decided to kind of change the script a little bit. I'm going to read this to you, and oh, we'll kind of. I think we'll leave the episode at this. Uh, the boy says, "Try not and close the sale. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth." And Neo says, "The truth." The boy says, "There is no sale." Neo asks, "There is no sale?" The boy says, then you will see it is not the sale that closes, it is yourself. <laughs> how fun, how fun. Ooh. A good way to wrap it up. Ooh. So fun. Mind blown. Yeah. No, it's fun. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and and That's we awesome. see this uh, show not as a closing but an opening to get your comments on it. What are your views? Do you agree or disagree? We really want to get the conversation out there. It will be available on Twitter, too, so Absolutely. you can continue with it and watch for it in other areas. Um, 
Uh, Elise, anything you want to add before we wrap up tonight? The one thing I would add is we would love to hear um, from you guys, from the audience, about questions you're running into, any social selling or sales dilemmas, anything that you may be struggling with, we would love to be able to answer here on the show. We'll troubleshoot it. We'll mastermind it, um, give you some ideas. Hopefully, they're good and not crap. So we would love to have <laughs> We'll have our coffee first. We'll make sure that we're <laughs> that we're on point. But we would love to hear from you guys about what are some things out in the field that you're running into so that we can really partner with you and help you in increasing your business and your sales. Excellent. I think that's a great idea. Um, and you know where to find us. You can uh, just get out the linking into sales.com. Uh, we have a brand new uh, brand new look to the website, so you know be sure to go out there and check that out. Uh, there we have a contact us form, or you can actually just reach out to us on LinkedIn. Uh, join the, the LinkedIn group. Hit us up on Twitter. I think we all have our. We have, you have four different Twitter accounts you can reach uh, reach us at, uh, especially at linking in the number two sales. Uh, you can find us there. And and uh, you know what would be great is if we could give them uh, some free profile training. For LinkedIn, oh, and yeah. Twitter. do we have anything we could do for yeah. them as as listeners? Yeah, what so so we know this. Are, there's a few folks who listen to the podcast, and uh, we want you to actually go out to socialselling.training. Not not it's not dot training dot com. It's just socialselling dot training. Go out there and sign up and take. Uh, we got two free courses out there. It's available to you right now, uh, and you can get uh, uh, LinkedIn profile fundamentals for the social seller, as well as Twitter profile fundamentals for the social seller. And, and those are two free courses. When you sign up, we will have other offerings that will be special to the people who sign up. At the completion, you can get a link to add to LinkedIn showing you completed the class. So, yeah, so sure basically, you get you, all the way through. You get a certificate of completion uh, uh, upon the completion of every course that you get, and that link is, uh, is available to you to include in your LinkedIn profile, and we'll teach you how to do that in our course. Sounds Bam. good. <laughs> or we might just do a how-to video, throw it up on YouTube channel. So, <laughs> Well, this is Martin Brosman. I'm Greg Heyer. And I'm Elise Archer. And you've been watching or listening to the Linking into Sales Social Selling Podcast. Have a great night.